Hi, this is Sarah McLeod, your host for Proving Cures. Today is February 12th, 2019. Thank you for um, tuning in, clicking on my video. I know it has been approximately four or five weeks since my last video. And last month was, of course, January 2019. And in the United States, January was also um, considered, in addition to being Glaucoma Awareness Month, because I know my last video addressed glaucoma. Um, it was also considered Cervical Health Awareness Month. And I had it on my mind to do a video about cervical health awareness, um, but I've been so busy um, in my personal life that I just haven't been able to get in front of the camera and share uh, the information that I've been able to find. So I'm gonna make them, this video won't be very long. Um, this is going to be focused specifically on cervicitis, which is basically the inflammation of the cervix. And um, a lot of women suffer from it acutely, meaning they might have, you know, a single episode of uh, inflammation of the cervix. And it might present itself um, in the form of vaginal itching, um, bleeding, vaginal bleeding or spotting in between periods, during sex or after sex. It may um, display as a green or yellow uh, discharge that has a foul smell to it, a foul odor. Um, the woman may experience pain during sex or pain after sex and even pain um, while urinating. These are all symptoms of cervicitis and normally if you're going through something like that, you're you know, of course going to go see a doctor, go see an OBGYN. Um, have a pap smear done, have swabs taken, cultures done, and normally um, it's been attributed to some form of sexual transmitted disease. So if you go have a pap smear done or have swabs taken, you know, and, and they check for um, venereal disease, they're, they're going to uh, take cultures for gonorrhea bacteria, chlamydia bacteria, and so forth. And um, normally if those cultures are positive, whatever antibiotics that's given will clear the cervicitis uh, as the cervicitis is basically um, a symptom of the larger bacterial infection going on. But there are some women who don't have STDs or a STD of any kind, um, who've never had children, uh, very young, haven't been having sex for a long period of time, who suffer, unfortunately, from chronic cervicitis, meaning it's something they always have. It never seems to go away. It seems incurable for them. And um, what I wanted to share was just basically a, a quick summary of a study called A Clinical Conundrum, Chronic Cervicitis. It was published December 21st of last year, December 21st, 2018, in the Journal for Pediatric and Adolescent Gynecology. Okay, and what it explained, it basically um, speaks about a case study of a 22-year-old uh, female patient who had chronic cervicitis and had negative test results for bacterial and viral pathogens, meaning she didn't have any uh, sexually transmitted disease, or, or basically she had no disease that could be detected whatsoever um, from normal gynecological tests. And so she suffered for 21 months, unfortunately, with the symptoms I described earlier. Um, she'd gone through multiple courses of antibiotics, different kinds of antibiotics, and they, the doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong, and she just suffered, unfortunately. Um, until one day, she was actually tested for a different kind of bacteria, something that's goes undetected a lot because it's not a uh, part of the normal course of testing um, uh, for pap smears or even STDs. And the bacteria that she was tested for was called Group B Streptococcus. So if you are a chronic, someone with chronic cervicitis, you're always suffering in silence and you're not sure what's been going on with your body. Um, based on this study, I encourage you to tell your doctor to please test you for strep, group, uh, group B streptococcus. 
She was found positive for group group B streptococcus and once found positive for that even though the um, bacteria is considered to be normal in the vagina. Um, once she was given um, antibiotics for that for that kind of bacteria, the cervicide is cleared up. So that's that is what this video is about. That's what I, I want to let you know. Um, if you are a chronic cervicide sufferer, maybe that will help your situation, and you won't have to suffer any longer. There was a study, another study, um, published in 1985. That's quite some time ago. Um, that actually is called cervicitis and urethritis caused by group B streptococcus. It was another case report. And it also um, found that group B, as the name implies, streptococcus uh, caused cervicitis for another patient. She actually had inflammation of the cervix and inflammation of the urethra. So I'm sure she had a lot of painful urinations as well. And once she was found to be positive for the group B strep uh, bacteria, her symptoms resolved after she was treated specifically with an um, antibiotic called phenoxymethylpenicillin. So keep that in mind, the, that, that name, phenoxymethylpenicillin. If you take it to your physician, your physician will know exactly how much to give you. This patient in particular um, had a seven-day course of it. Um, at 250 milligrams by mouth every six hours for the seven days and her symptoms cleared up so